you are now a missionary of social media. You need to share these programs with your friends, with your enemies. Share it. Steven and Daniela Aristizabo, and we want to welcome you to Comunidad MDE. You're at home, you're in community. We want to recognize all the mothers that are watching with us and say thank you for your love, for your patience, and all the sacrifices you've made for each one of us. We know that you are the representation of God's love on earth. We love you. And, and if you have your mom at your side, we invite you to give her a hug and squeeze her tight, but if not, send her a message and pray for her. You did it already? All right. We also want to encourage you that the Word of God says, where two or three are gathered together in His name, Jesus is there with them. So, prepare your hearts so that we can worship God together in our houses. Today, we have two special guests. One is Nathan Taylor that was with us in the Breja Conference and here in the quarantine. The other is Tucker Fleischman from Central Life, the worship group of Central Life Church. And so, prepare your hearts and let's worship God together with everything. May the love of the Lord remain forever with those who fear him. His salvation extends to the children of the children of those who are faithful to his covenant and obey his commands. May the Lord your God be with you like he was with your fathers. May he not leave you nor forsake you. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. May the blessing of the Lord make you rich without sorrow. Together we declare that you and your house will serve the Lord. May your God bless you with bread and water and protect you from sickness, and in your land no woman will suffer miscarriage or be barren. The Lord will give you a long and full life. Amen. May the Lord fulfill his covenant of endless love with you, just as he promised your ancestors. And the Lord will love you and bless you and give you many children. He will bless your land and your animals with fertility. We declare that wherever you go, whatever you do, you will be blessed. May the Lord of peace give you peace in every moment and every situation. May the Lord be with each one of you. May the Lord your God allow you to enjoy the fruit of your labor. May you be happy and prosperous. Your wife will be like a fruitful vine blooming in your home. Your children will be vigorous olive trees around your table. This is the blessing of the Lord for those who fear Him. Lord 
Thank you, Jesus, because through you, we are blessed in the city and the country, in the valleys and the mountaintops, in coming and going from our home, and including in the hard moments and the good moments. Thank you that your blessing enriches and does not bring sadness. Amen. Did you know that our church has an outreach in the city? No, I didn't know. Tell us more. As it turns out, because of your donations and all of your help, we have been able to help many other people. We have given out face masks and food boxes and hand sanitizer, including insulin to those who need it in order to live. So, thank you very much, community, for all the seeds you have sown. And if you want to be a part of this wonderful work, enter now in the page faypaisa.com slash cudad and tell us how you would like to help us and be a part of the beautiful ministry in the city.
Lord, we know that your hand is not too short to bless us and that your ears have not turned from hearing our prayers. With this same confidence, we hand over our tithes and offerings, understanding that the provision and the blessing comes from you. Our community has changed. Now our services are online. We have virtual groups and counseling through community.mde.com. Also, you can give online. You can give your tithes and offerings in the Give tab of community.mde.com. And also, we have an account in both Davi Vienda and Ban Colombia so that you can deposit your tithes and offerings. Now, you can give your tithe with joy and your offerings as well. It's time to prepare your tithes and offerings. Thank you, Lord, for giving us the privilege of honoring you with our finances and with our hearts. Bless our church and bless all the families that are connected with us. We trust that you will do much more than we can ask, think, or imagine. In the name of Jesus, amen. And we have two announcements for you. The first is that we want to know you and we want to be close to you. And what better way than to do it in an online group? If you're still not a part of an online group, I invite you to go to comunidadmde.com in the Groups tab and fill out the form, and we will contact you and help you find a group. Or you can call the cell phone 316-529-5200. This Wednesday we have something amazing. We're happy to announce that our hour of prayer has returned. This Wednesday, May 13th at 7 a.m., our hour of prayer will start live, and we want to be together to seek and worship our God. Our church is so excellent and so cool. Listen, let me tell you. Turns out our church, Comunidad MDE, opened a virtual campus. There, you can find our services, the Bible, the pastor's notes. You can also request prayer online, and you have everything of our community at your reach. You can enter at comunidadmde.online.church, and from there, you can live the experience wherever you are. Now, you can make yourself comfortable and raise your expectations because our message comes from a powerful woman and mom who is full of faith, our pastor, Kathy. And there in the comment box, send applause emojis for her, a powerful woman with a powerful teaching. Hola comunidad, aquí estoy con Jiminy Cricket, Pepe Grillo, <ríe> y les quería compartir una historia linda de mi mamá, o como ustedes lo conocen, pastora Kathy McMillan. Bueno, yo, yo cuando era niño me costaba mucho, mucho ir a dormir, pues aún pues, sufría, sufría de un poco de depresión, pero mi mamá todas las noches Entraba al cuarto, subía la cubija y ella sacaba un libro y ella me empezó a leer y leer y leer, leer historias de unos libros de unos misioneros en África y cosas que ni hoy en día no recuerdo nada. Solo me acuerdo la sensación de escuchando la voz de mi mamá y yendo a dormir. Así que, mamá, gracias. Feliz Día de la Mamá. Thank you, Christian. Um, he surprised me with that. And you know, there's kids watching this video and, and you think, oh, we're all stuck in the house. What can we do for our moms? Well, Christian and his brother Andrew, one year for Mother's Day, wrote little coupons for me. And they decorated them and said, Mom, this is to give you two 
a feet massage and two back rubs free. And each kid gave me one and I used them. And I said, hey, I want my back rub. And you know, there's a lot of things you can do for your parents. And the Bible says in Ephesians, obey your parents. And in the second verse says, honor your parents and you should have a long life. Hey, we're in a tr tricky time right now. I mean, things are between life and death with this coronavirus. But the Bible says, if you wanna have long life, honor your parents on your parents, write to them. My mom's in New Jersey. I'm calling her all the time. I had another sister give her a present. Uh, my dad has coronavirus. He's in the hospital right now. And I'm just confessing the word, believing that God is there protecting him. And um, prophesying is, the word prophesy comes from the word light, alumbrad, light, give light, um, show path, give a direction. And, um, I believe that as women, as fighters, we're to prophesy, to speak the word. I'm speaking Psalms 91 over my father. I have it written out, and it says, no play will come near your dwelling. It says he will send angels to protect you. In one translation, it even says, he'll take your hand, and he will hold your hand. And that was my prayer, that God would just be with my dad in the hospital, because nobody can visit him, that he is not alone, and angels are taking his hand. And then Psalm 91 ends with saying, he will give you a long life. That's what a, 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 a lighthouse is. It illumines the way. It gives direction. It gives protection. How many times the mother says, don't do that. Be careful. I had a boyfriend and my mom said, he's no good for you. Don't. He's no good for you. And she was right. He was no good for you. Like here you can see like the sharks. And from the lighthouse way up, they can see the sharks that nobody else can see. And they can tell you, no swimming over there. Be careful. They have the ability to see ahead of time. And that's what the Holy Spirit gives us. That light represents the Holy Spirit. And you put oil into the lighthouse. And the oil represents the Holy Spirit. And I have a story to tell you about there was this captain a big ship in that time years and years and years ago over a hundred years ago and his name was captain manolo and he was a very proud captain and he was so proud that he had the biggest ship around and in those days they communicated other ships with other ships out in the ocean with lights and also with the lighthouses and one night this Captain Manolo began to receive messages and it said, turn your course, go 30 meters to the right. And he's got those messages through lights and he said, ah, oh, who's he to tell me what to do? I'm the big captain. He has to turn 30 meters to the right. And with his lights, he said that, turned, and then he got a message that came back turn 30 meters to the right. And he said, I'm the great captain, Manolo. Who is he to tell me what to do? And he responded again, I'm the great capitan, one of the biggest ships in the world. You turn 30 meters to the right. And everything was still, everything was quiet. He was full of pride, full of himself. When all of a sudden he got the lights come back and the message said, I am the great capitan of the lighthouse. Turn 30 meters to the right or you all will die. Hidden rocks ahead. And there you have it. God's word doesn't change. He gives us direction. The fire, the lighthouse is like a light onto our paths. It's to show us hidden dangers that we don't know. Mothers are to do that. Listen to your mom. Moms have like that fifth, that sixth sense. They know something's going to happen and we just don't want to believe it. And let me tell you another story. It was about a girl who fell in love with this young Navy, guy from the Navy, a sailor. And he had to ship off into the ocean. But before he left, he asked her to marry him. And he gave her a ring with a promise that he would come back. And he said, please wait for me. And when I come back, we will be married. So she watched him off on the shore. She lived along this shore as a ship went away. And they say every day she would go out to the ocean with her scarf. And she would be waving and waving at all the ships, hoping that it was her beloved. And she would wave day after day after day. And in the nighttime, she would go out with a little light 
And she would be looking, and as all the ships came by, she was always waving to them, hoping and waiting that it would be her beloved coming back. And day after day, she would be there in the daytime with her scarf and in the nighttime with her light. And days turned into weeks and weeks turned into months and months turned into years. And he never came back because he died out in the ocean. But she became a lighthouse for thousands of young men that went by there on their ships. And because they saw her little light, they came to shore safely and they were saved. And they loved her so much that when she died, they made a big, great big statue in honor of her. And she was considered a living lighthouse. And that is our call, mothers, and every believer, to be a lighthouse for those who are lost in darkness, it could be in depression right now with this quarantena, we're all shut in. There's a lot of depression happening, a lot of sadness, but we're called to be lights. We're called to give hope. And as I started out with Matthew, don't let anything cover your light and put out your light because these are difficult times. Like I said, I am praying and praying and we're praying for my father right now, protection of my mother, for all the loved ones in our church. We're giving out um, uh, food and groceries to help the people. It's a time of giving, a time of worshiping. Don't let the devil steal your worship. A praying. We declare the blood of Jesus on our homes. That's covering of protection. But that reminds me of another person. And as believers, as mothers, mothers are always giving and giving and taking care of people. And, and, and sometimes we don't even sleep because we're thinking of the next meal and how to organize things. And there's a story about this lighthouse keeper whose, whose job was to keep the oil in the lighthouse, keep the light shining and burning to save the other ships. But also he lived in a town where people would begin to come to his house and knock on the door and say, oh, please, please lend me some oil for my little lamps in my house. I don't have any oil. Please give me some. And he would give them a little. Then somebody else would come and say, oh, I have to run my stove and I need some oil. Please, please give me some oil. And then he would just little by little lend it to different people and helping and giving and giving and giving. And one day a great big storm came against that lighthouse and the waves were pushing and shoving. It was so dark you couldn't see. The rain was pelting down and it was the, one of the biggest storms they ever had. And there were ships out there and they couldn't find their way. And so of course the man ran to his lighthouse and he was putting oil and oil in, into his lighthouse and the light began to shine and he could see all the ships there trying to find their way. But then all of a sudden, psh, the light went out. And the man looked and looked and looked and he had no more oil. He had given it all away. His main purpose was to use that oil to help save the ships. And many ships crashed that day. And many people died that day because he had given away his oil. And this is a principle for us as Christians, as mothers. We give, 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 but sometimes we forget to take care of ourselves. And then we find that we're cranky and ornery and we forget to pray and to worship or just take a walk or meditate or do something you like or put on a movie that you like, not that everybody else like, get out a book or do something that you like to do to take care of yourself because your job is to help take care of the rest. And as Christians, sometimes we get away from the word. We're not in the house of God, but we are in the house together. We're together in the house of God with his word. But don't let the devil put out your light. And I know there's a lot of sadness in this time. Mother's Day, there's, there's men, I just feel in the spirit, or even sad because you've lost your mother. And it causes you to cry on Mother's Day. Just receive the love of the Father or in a grandmother who raised you and you're missing that grandmother. Or because you were given away, not raised by your mother, there's sadness, but receive right now. The Holy Spirit is represented by oil, by light. Let him come and fill your heart right now. Let him fill the heart. Maybe your mom is 
very long, far away, like mine is. My kids are far away. I'm not with them. Let the Holy Spirit touch you and fill you. So your lamp will not go out. Your lamp will not go out. Receive the love of the Holy Spirit. And I see some young people sitting on their bed, even watching this. And you're just, you just can't stand being in the house anymore. This is really hard for you, really hard. Emotionally, you're dealing with depression. Some have thought of suicide. There's anger. There's just rebellion come out of you. And you didn't even know why, but just receive that. The light of the Holy Spirit, the light of His Word, comfort. Comfort, hope where there's no hope. Light in this darkness. It's like a tunnel, but we're going to come out of this. We're going to come. The storm is going to pass over. We're going to get to the other side. When Jesus was in the boat with his disciples and a big storm came against him, it says that storm represented and was literally an activity of demons. I believe there's a demonic storm against all this coronavirus, the spirit of death, of the finances of lives. But we raise up in the name of Jesus. We say like Jesus said, stop, be still, no more in the name of Jesus to this storm, to the depression, to the stress and receive. Invite the Holy Spirit, come in with you. You're going to get on the other side. And those of you who have gotten far away from the Lord, I believe many people are watching our programs, have been away, came to the Comunidad de Faith 25 years ago, and you haven't been back. 20 years ago, 18, 15 years ago. But you say, I want to come back to Jesus. Not just the church, but to Jesus. You're going to open your heart right now to Him. Those who don't know Him have gotten away, and you want to open your heart to the love and forgiveness. It's a light of love and forgiveness oil of forgiveness let's do a prayer together right now where you can invite jesus into your heart again ask for forgiveness for getting away from him letting other things get in your way and make him the lord of your life and he'll bring his peace in the storm he'll be that lighthouse in the storm right now he'll give you direction help you see what to do after when the doors open and we're outside jobs studies what are you going to do say heavenly father I need you in the storm. I feel like I'm in darkness and I need the light of your love, of your forgiveness, of the Holy Spirit. Come into my heart again. Come anew and afresh. Forgive me of my sins. There's lots of confusion. There's sadness, there's depression. Come and take it away in the name of Jesus. I receive fresh anointing, fresh oil, your light in the darkness, in the light at the end of this tunnel. Come Holy Spirit, forgive me of my sins. I give you my life. I receive your peace. Jesus said, peace to the storm. Receive it in Jesus name. I bless you. I speak love on you. You are not alone. You can call us right now. You can write to us. You can connect with us. It's a big world, but it's a small world. You're in house and you're in the comunidad you're with us we want to help you write to us connect with us we're every weekend every morning at seven in the morning my husband's t teaching every night at seven o'clock we're teaching we want to help you to be light don't let the devil put out your light because you are called to be a lighthouse to give hope in the darkness light in the darkness i bless you and happy mother's day joy it's a day of joy of light of new beginnings i bless you in jesus name in jesus you not only find the peace that you need but an even greater gift that gift is salvation and forgiveness for all your sins including those that cause you pain and shame this happens through the sacrifice of jesus on the cross there you will find this gift. If you accept him, you can pray along with me. Lord Jesus, I thank you for dying on the cross for me. Thank you for forgiving my sins. I repent and ask forgiveness for living apart from you. Today, I receive your peace, your forgiveness, and your grace. I receive the Holy Spirit so that he would teach me to walk in his ways. Amen. You have not only received forgiveness for all your sins and his peace, but also you've received the Holy Spirit who will teach you how to walk this journey. 
and you've received a new family to which you belong, and that's the family of faith. Welcome. Thank you, Jesus, for this message that inspires us and brings value and hope to all the families. I ask you, Holy Spirit, that this teaching would remain in our heart and produce a lot of fruit. Amen. Now, let's see what's happening in Generations. Hi guys, my name is Vanessa Garcia and welcome to Comunidad Generations Online. And remember, if you're at home, you're in community. I'm very happy to be here with you because we are learning about something that I love and that's the teachings of Jesus. Last week, we opened one capsule of the Beatitudes and this week, we will open another capsule. So, how about we open it? Let's go! Blessed are those who weep, for they will be comforted. Matthew 5, 4. Okay, what? Jesus said we can be happy if we cry? Actually, I don't understand. How can we be happy if we cry? Do you understand? I really don't understand. But for this reason, we have a special guest that will explain how this can be possible. Let's wait for her. Hey, hello, myself, how are you? Hi, myself, I'm very good. Thank you for inviting me. That's great. We just read in the Bible that Jesus said we can be happy when we cry. How is that possible? Well, I'll explain. Jesus told us in Matthew 5, 4, that blessed are those who weep. That means that although many have told us that you shouldn't cry or you should be strong, Jesus is teaching us in this word that we can cry. And you know, sometimes it is necessary that we pass through difficult moments or complicated situations because even in the middle of the pain is where we can grow. And sometimes things are going to happen that hurt us, but we know that we have a great promise that in the middle of the pain, in the middle of the sadness, in the middle of our crying, we will be comforted. For example, what do you think Abraham felt when God asked him to hand over Isaac? I think this made him very sad. Even though Abraham trusted in the Lord and knew that God was in control, maybe he felt very hurt because in the moment, he didn't completely understand the will of God. There will be moments when the Lord asks us for things that we love, things we wish for, or there will be things that hurt us or people will leave us. But Jesus tells us that in the middle of the pain, we will be comforted. So for this, we can be happy even when we cry because we know and have the hope that in him we will receive comfort and we have the arms of the Father that will embrace us when we are sad or feel alone or simply we don't know what to say. But we know that God is with us and he comforts us. Wow, myself, that's incredible. Thank you for explaining this to us. Thank you very much, myself, and thanks to all of you for listening. And I hope each one of you holds in your heart that blessed are those who weep, because in God we receive comfort. Bye. Thank you, myself. Wow, what an incredible story that she just told us. Yes, it is possible to be happy when we cry. Wow, it's incredible because we will receive comfort. Now, in this time, we want that each of you meet in your house to make a craft together. But it's not just any craft. It's a craft to help us remember this truth. But it's also prophetic because we are making hats or caps or crowns that go on our heads 
And this means that our mind is going to change in the manner we think. So I challenge you to make this craft together as a family. Let's go to it. Today for our hat, we will need just one piece of paper in your favorite color, or if you want to make it bigger, you can use poster board or whatever material you would like. We will begin to make the following folds. And that's how. This is our little hat. What a cool craft. Now it's time to do it at home. Here's how mine turned out. It's okay if you don't have a lot of materials like me. The important thing is to be creative and remember the word that God has put in our hearts in this time. And so don't forget to write it. Blessed are those who weep. If you have poster board or if you want to make it bigger, that's great. It will work with whatever material and you'll do great. All right, guys. It's here that we leave you. See you again here at Generations Online. Bye. See you soon. Thank you, Generations, for your excellence and creativity. So now, as we finish the service, we want to leave you, wishing you a week full of blessings, open doors, peace in your heart, and joy in the midst of the trial. Goodbye, and we'll see you next weekend. missionary of social media. You need to share these programs with your friends, with your enemies. Share it! <laughs>